conquests and rebellions, victories and defeats, honor and betrayal, the noble and the wicked. Join me, Muhammad Tim Humble, on a journey of discovery through our Islamic past to find lessons for our Islamic future. Perceive the unusual and consistent progress of Islam due to its unique attitude with the passage of time in Lessons from Islamic History, next on Peace TV. hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Beast TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113230. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace Team, the solution for humanity. Fresh to holy peace. Madiha Kazi, a class 4 student, was born on 19th November 2000. Presently, she is 9 years and 6 months old. Her achievements include. Certificate of Excellence in Makharij Tilawat al Quran, Arabic language, and English language. Madiha likes reading Islamic stories and singing Islamic songs. With good grasping power and leadership qualities, she is very enthusiastic on being a teacher and teaching the Islamic International School, inshallah. George Bernard Shaw said about our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and I quote, he must be called the savior for the humanity. I believe that if a man like Muhammad were to assume the dictatorship of the modern world, would have succeeded in solving its problem in a way that would bring it much needed peace and happiness. Even the non-Muslims, historians, spoke so greatly about this hero of all times. We have Madiha Qazi speak on the topic, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Brothers and sisters, please welcome Sister Madiha Qazi. Alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalam, ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in, amma ba'd. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ رَبِّ شَرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسْرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحَلُوا الْأُقْتَةَ مِّنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِ Respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. The topic of my talk is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If 
you remember, few months or few years ago, a lot of talks were going around about Islam and specifically the Prophet of Islam, where people were attributing all the atrocities which are taking place was the fault of Prophet If you remember, an evangelical priest in the USA by the name of Jerry Farewell. He spoke and he said, I think that Muhammad was a terrorist and I think that Islam is a wicked religion. Naudu Billah. On the other hand, when you compare fair-minded Westerners who did not necessarily revert to Islam, but they had studied about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will be amazed by what these people had to say about him. Thus, we invite people to do study the life and seed of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the end of the day, you may not choose to follow his teachings and theology, but you will definitely not attribute such nonsense to this beloved man. When we look during the time when Muhammad sallallahu came, you will be amazed to see the similarities between what was going on back then and what is going on nowadays. You will feel that the world is in the need of a man like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us analyze today the solution given in the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the problems that which the world is facing today. First, one thing that stands about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that he was one of the masses and he spoke on behalf of masses. He was not an elite disconnected from the reality of his people. He was not an elite that was misled by majority living back then, but rather he was one of them and he made sure that he speaks to them and he speaks on their behalf. And that is why people loved him more. Second, the other beautiful teaching that which we observe is that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa always preached for the basic needs of the humankind. And we see this in the teachings of the Quran, my dear brothers and sisters. In the fourth year of prophethood, the Prophet ﷺ is receiving a revelation. And what is the revelation that he receives? Have you seen the one who belies the religion? When you think a person belies the religion, what comes to mind? A person that does not pray, a person that does not believe in God, a person that does not believe in the Day of Judgment, a person that does not believe in the Prophethood of Prophet ﷺ. But, the contrary of our expectation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is the description of the one who belies the religion. What Allah says, Have you seen the one who belies the religion? What are his characteristics? And he does not encourage and he does not promote the feeding of those who are poor. So, he is teaching us this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that from now onwards, if you want to see who truly believes or not, these are going to be your reference point. These are going to be your criterion that will tell us what kind of person you are. This shows the quality of working for the basic needs of the humankind. Third, subhanallah of the characteristics of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will not expect a messenger, a prophet to be a person that smiles or tells jokes or appreciates jokes. But if you look into the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will be amazed by how approachable this man was and how much people loved him. They loved joking with him and he also loved joking with them. We sometimes have erroneous belief that the more Muslim you are, you are supposed to laugh less. Laughter is not unholy, brothers and sisters. In a hadith, a man asks the Prophet of Allah, what are the dearest deeds that Allah loves most? So the Prophet said, 
should bring joy into the heart of another believer. There are different methods to bring joy. Sometimes he speaks nice. Sometimes he may do something nice to them. And also sometimes he may tell them something funny. And the Prophet said, If you have the correct intention, then at that point you will be doing a deed that is most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said that there was a man. He was mashallah. He was big man. Very, very big. A really big man. So he came to visit the Prophet and he extended his head in the room and he said, O Prophet of Allah, may I come in? The Prophet said, Come in and bring the rest with you as well. So here we see that Muhammad is not only smiling, but also making the other people to smile as well. One problem, brothers and sisters, we have made with regards to our beloved Muhammad is that we only made Imam out of Muhammad We have limited Muhammad to the masjid. We have limited Muhammad to the pulpit. Do you give a khutbah in the same manner that Muhammad gives the khutbah? Do you pray inside the masjid the same way the Prophet prayed? The minute you step outside of the masjid, you do not take the teachings of Muhammad with you. But rather, you leave Muhammad in the masjid. And what happens at that point is that our imitation of Muhammad becomes very, very physical. It has to do with our appearance. Do we look like that our Prophet look? And please, do not misunderstand me. These things are very important. Whether you grew up good, whether you want to wear the head care that Muhammad did, you want to use miswak. These are the beautiful elements of Muhammad But by no means they reflect the moral character of Muhammad And for us to make a bigger deal of the appearance of Muhammad but not of the character of Muhammad then it is a catastrophe and I think it is despicable. When people look like him but they do not act like Muhammad then that becomes very, very problematic. Brothers and sisters, the figure of Muhammad sallallahu is the universal one. We must share the teachings of our beloved Muhammad sallallahu with everyone and follow him, not only by word, but even in spirit. I would like to conclude my talk with a verse from the glorious Quran, the same verse that which I quoted in the beginning of my talk from Surah Al-Hazab, chapter number 33, verse number 21. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Verily, in the Messenger of Allah, you have the best exemplary character. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ جَزَاكَ Sister Madiha for this heart-touching presentation. I quote in the words of Lamatin, a famous historian. Philosopher, orator, apostle, legislator, warrior, conqueror of ideas, restorer of racial dogmas, founder of 20 terrestrial empires, and one terrestrial empire that is Muhammad. As regards, all human greatness may be measured, one may as well ask, is there a man greater than he? In the words of Ram Krishna Rao, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a perfect model for the human life. May Allah help us to emulate him. I feel the peace, feel the peace inside, of me. inside of me, a complete tranquility. I remember Allah, He remembers me. Feel the peace, feel the breeze. Fresh, pure, holy peace. Peace in you, peace in me, peace for everybody. Fresh, pure, holy peace. Oh.
the value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY. 3008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Iman is the secret of Allah in His creation. That which he places into the hearts of those that he loves. He loves. He loves. He loves. He loves. Once it glows, nothing is stronger that can drive a person, and nothing is sweeter that a person can experience. It's a glimpse of paradise that you see with the eyes of your heart. Unlock your Iman with my new series, Imanology, the Fundamentals of Faith. Fundamentals of faith. Enrich your Iman by following the factors that would open the door of eternal blessings for all believers in Imanology, the study of Iman, every Sunday at 5 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Oh. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY. 3008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity.
Network, the solution for humanity. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد All praise is due to Allah We send peace and blessings upon the messenger of Allah and upon his family and his companions Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh In this episode today we come to talk about what is really a huge watershed in the time of the history of the Muslims. A huge event, a calamity that shook the world of the Muslims and a calamity that led to a severe, severe trial befalling the Muslims and befalling the Ummah of Islam. Today we're going to talk about the assassination of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an. Hudayfa radiallahu an, the secret keeper of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who used to ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about evil in order not to fall into it. He said, we were with Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, and he said to us, who among you remembers the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding the fitna, regarding the tribulation? He said, I remember it as he said it. He said, tell us. I said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, the trial of a man is in his family, his wealth, his self, his son, and his neighbor. And it may be expiated by means of fasting, praying, giving charity, commanding what is good and forbidding what is evil. Umar said, it's not this that I'm talking about. It's not what I mean. I'm talking about the trial, the tribulation, the fitna that surges like the waves of the sea. The tribulation that surges like the waves of the sea. Hudayfa, at this point, Hudayfa knows what it is that Umar radiallahu an is referring to. And none of the other companions in the gathering know what is going on. And likewise, none of the other people in the gathering know what it is that Umar is talking about. What is this trial that is going to come that is going to be like the waves of the sea? What is this trial that's going to come that's going to surge like a tsunami against the Muslims? Hudayfa turns to Umar and says, What does that have to do with you or Amir al-Mu'mineen? Between you and it is a closed door. So at this point, Hudayfa says, you don't have anything to worry about, O Umar. Hudayfa, remember, used to ask the Prophet ﷺ about the evil in order to avoid it. He used to know about the tribulations and the trials. Perhaps he was the most knowledgeable of all of the companions of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ regarding the trials and tribulations and difficulties that were going to befall the Muslims. He said, you have no concern of this, O Umar. This is not a matter that should be concerning to you, O Umar. Between you and it is a closed door. So the Amir al-Mu'mineen, he turned and he said, will the door be opened or will it be broken? So Hudayfa turned and said, rather the door will be broken. At this point there is an example going on. There is an example of a tsunami that is about to come and there is a door or a wall, a defense that is stopping it from hitting the Muslims. And Hudayfa says for Umar not to worry because he is on the other side of the door. And then Umar asks, will the door be opened 
or will it be broken? Until this point, the companions don't understand what it is that Umar is referring to. Only Hudayfa and Umar, they're having a conversation in public, but nobody understands what they're talking about except the two of them. He said it will be broken. Then Umar said, then by Allah, it will never be closed until the hour begins. Abu Wa'il, the one who narrates this hadith from Hudayfa, he said to Hudayfa, did Umar know what was meant by the door? We're listening to you talking about a door, and a door that's going to be broken. Was there only you or Hudayfa who knew what this door is, or what is meant by the door? Or was it that Umar, radiallahu anhu, knew what was meant by the door?